Welcome back to my channel, LR Retro. Now, we will review the next chapter of Grappler Baki, the prehistoric pickle arc. It's the chapter where Hanma Baki used his secret technique to seriously damage the prehistoric man. But what kind of technique did he use? Let's find out. But first, please know that you can buy the new Grappler Baki Volume Collections, Baki the Grappler Season 1 and 2 DVDs, and Bandai's Grappler Baki figurine on the link on the description below. By buying, you can help the channel grow and release more Baki videos. Please subscribe and let's begin. The chapter starts inside the Karakuan underground arena. The prehistoric man is helplessly lying on the ground. He tried to stand up after receiving the devastating blow of Hanma Baki. And he tried to walk closer to the young man. However, before he can even take a step, the prehistoric man falls to the ground once again. The spectators then commented. Wow, he fell down like a tree. Retsu. What is going on? Questioned by Haneyama. Retsu replied. Even I was unable to see it clearly. And words might be unable to describe it. The blow of the ancient times. And the blow of modern times. He was able to withstand them and remain standing, due to the extreme physical toughness of Pickle's body. I am sure that Baki noticed it as well. That no matter how many blows Pickle received. His brain does not shake. So, he tried something different. A punch that connects with nothing more than skin. Skin? Rather than hit the chin directly. He changed the course of his punch. It is a rare event. Occasionally seen in the boxing ring. The perfect exchange where both men should have been knocked out. Yet, out of that situation, one man throws another swing. And his opponent falls face forward. And after two counts, it's obvious that he can't get up. He imitated that. That does occur, but it's certainly rare. The results are nothing less than surprising. A person who has withstood a punch covered in a cushion will faint from mere contact with the cushion. It merely grazed the skin of his jaw, but the connection between the two always becomes clear when the chin is struck and the brain, unseen by the naked eye, shakes at a high speed. From this punch, Baki used this piece of skin with unseen precision. The first was with his left fist the second with his right fist, the third with a sword-like right foot. Pickle's brain probably started shaking for the first time. And after the second strike, it increased its speed. After the third strike, the speed increased even more. And the brain lost all its capability to function normally. It showed Pickle a formidable scene he had never seen. Pickle's stance remains firm, certain that he is still standing. But the ground keeps getting closer and closer, Pickle has just now experienced an extremely rare technique. His confusion must have reached its peak by now. Retsu Kayo's analysis of the fight was correct. Pickle saw with his own eyes, blows shrouded in mystery. Coming from someone who underwent a miraculous recovery. Baki should be on the verge of death. Yet, you are free to unbelievably manipulate the ground and your surroundings. You have become invincible through the use of magic. But even though his body is shaking, Pickle does not try to escape. He withstood the shock. He withstood the weight. He withstood the force. He endured the danger. He withstood all the risks. The sense of being invincible was etched into his whole body. A belief that he never relinquished. Then he came to our time. And once again, he was challenged. By these little big men. Still able to inflict him with pain. But his body also withstood that pain. But this was his very first time experiencing something beyond his imagination. Slamming into the ground was a sensation he could never have described. For two full counts, he was out. The ground never moved. It was something that had never happened before. Pickle's body that never moved unless instructed, moved unwilling. Even this big guy's impact cannot be compared to. The Homo erectus could barely see the figure of this little earth-moving giant. Baki then thinks. Not yet. My body still isn't functioning properly. I still haven't recovered from the shock of falling down twice. But the game is still on. All of a sudden, Han Mabaki did a weird and familiar stance. Everyone became surprised. Then Baki walks towards the prehistoric man. He is thinking. Pickle. Sorry. Retsu Kayo then thinks. I get it. That is what it is. Then Baki continued. I was playing around. But now, just for a little bit you will become messy. You noticed it, and this is your answer. The reason why everyone failed. You are a genius. 
a real fighting genius. Then Han Mabaki suddenly stomped the ground. And he unleashed a devastating slap. The spectators then commented. Pickle, you must feel like you're in hell. Could you explain Retsu-san? His fists are like whip strokes. Hama Yujiro's son has just shown that he is capable of being his equal. Then we see the prehistoric man howling in pain. Hanayama then said. He's in pain. A guy that tough and he's in pain. Wait. What? There's an imprint of his hand on his back. That's Benda. It's a technique based down from Japan's way of the void fighting style. In Chinese Kenpo, it is taught as the Columbus Egg Technique. Relaxing the muscle to an absolute level. Mastering the use of bodily tension to a high degree. Oddly, when the tension becomes lax. The legs and hands become heavy. Finally, even facial expression loses all tension. And the body finally becomes like a whip. Coming to this point. The difference between the weak and strong disappears. Why? Because this technique aims for a human mechanism. That's equal between everyone. From a well-trained muscular body to a teenage girl's soft skin. An open palm hit with bodily tension mastered. Hurts all the same. Getting hit with the pow. Hanayama. Between you and a baby. For you, the pain is pretty much nothing. But getting hit with a slap, oddly enough, the pain felt from the immortal Hanayama. And the newborn baby isn't that much different. I see. Agreed by both Hanayama and Takigawa. Then Han Mabaki unleashed another benda technique. Leaving Pickle with an intense amount of pain. And most likely. Out of all the species and organism on Earth that have appeared through the millennia. Of Earth. All those billions of creatures. There hasn't been one that attacks the skin in such an indiscriminate manner as a whip. That's certain enough. That's convincing reasoning. Well, there's a certain type that uses it. The females of the human race. In other words, women. Yeah. A slap. Right? Then the son of Ogre unleashed a whip-like kick. Attacking Pickle on the skin once again. Takigawa then shouted. Oh, would you look at that. That tough guy. He's clearly taken a defensive stance. Cornering that Pickle into defensive. This is probably. Within Pickle's lifetime, the first time he's ever had to. That's Baki for you. Cornering that monster. No, it's not like that. That hellish pain Baki gave Pickle. It's reached his pride. The prehistoric man is now angered and he's now ready to unleash a counter-attack. What do you think of this chapter? Do you think the prehistoric man can still have a comeback in this match? Comment down your opinion below. Special thanks to Stranger Dragons Prevail, Francois, The Real Zurvan, A Patreon of the Uts, Jacket, Johnny Might, JJF, OK, Vega Punk, Isom Harris, Awesome Swaceable, Trond Becker, Will, Thomas West, Casey, Dead Fox 0606, John Vinovich, Ahmed Zoyer, Joshua Ash, Aiden, Mars Kane, Claudio Aguilera, Francisco Carrillo, Jaden Robinson, Carlos Rios, Reiner Braun, Tarek Abujabur, and Brennan. We really appreciate your help. If you want to support my channel, please subscribe to my Patreon, LR Shion. I will put a link in the description below. Our next video will be about Hanma Baki, the worst fear of pickle. Stay tuned.